It's 1852, and England is at the height of her colonial powers. Her admiralty is dispatched, the warship HMS Birkenhead, to the southern tip of Africa. She's packed with troops and munitions for another frontier war. But something tragic happens on day 49 of her journey. In calm water, in the middle of the night, on a well-mapped stretch of coastline, the Birkenhead plows straight into a well-known reef. In under an hour, 436 people are dead. Many drown. Many are eaten by sharks. You're about to experience the true story of a terrible tragedy at sea. It's a story of deception, of pirates, of lost treasure, and of using the world's most efficient predator to get rid of the evidence. There are an awful lot of mysteries attending to the fact that the Birkenhead uh, was wrecked under the conditions uh, that took place. Mysteries that include why the ship is traveling so close to a dangerous shore, why there are three tons of gold and silver secretly stashed below deck, and why the ship is being followed by so many sharks. It's 1852, and the vessels plying the world's oceans are evolving. The age of steel-hauled, steam-powered ships is at hand, replacing wood frame sailing ships. The Birkenhead is a transitional ship, using both sail and steam, and that makes her fast. She's traveled from Portsmouth, England, to Simonstown, at the southern tip of Africa, in just 47 days. At Simonstown, the Birkenhead takes on coal and water and offloads most of her civilian passengers. Only seven women and 13 children now accompany the hundreds of soldiers and sailors that set out for Algoa Bay. Captain Robert Salmond orders the Birkenhead to stay within three miles of the coast. Salmond is fully aware that his orders are tempting fate just as he knows other dangers this stretch of coastline holds. Another interesting thing about the Birkenhead, which doesn't really come out in the stories that are told about her, is the fact that this was her second trip around the South African coast. Uh, so things weren't new to her captain. Despite maintaining a good speed, several hours are unaccounted for in the official record. It remains unclear why the captain did not oversee the nightly watch change or why he didn't tell the sailors that a single reef, well known and charted, lay in their path. If you ever go out to Burgundy Reef, you'll soon understand that if you go 10 meters to the left or 10 meters to the right, you would have missed the rock completely. Now, it was a well known fact that the rock existed. But the Birkenhead does not miss the rock. Without slowing, she hammers the submerged reef with all her 2,000 tons, tearing open her iron hull below the waterline. A new level of panic ensues as the hunters emerge from the depths in massive numbers. And this may have had to do with the fact that there was probably a larger shark population in the area. But I think also the fact that people were in the water thrashing about, panicking, um, giving up all the distress signals that sharks pick up, uh, probably was one of the important reasons why that many sharks appeared on the scene that quickly. Men in the water face a long, dangerous swim to shore, clinging to wreckage and hearing cries all about them as the sharks take their victims. 436 people die in the South African surf. A fortune in gold and silver seems to vanish. 
There were always investigations after a maritime disaster like the sinking of the Birkenhead. And in the case of the Birkenhead, there was a court-martial because she was a Royal Navy ship. One of the things that came out of the court-martial was that there were bright lights on shore. Very, very bright lights. Much brighter than a normal fire. Then these lights might have been the signal for the ship to slow down and for boats to come out or go out from the ship with the treasure and take it ashore. With so many questions and an incredible fortune at stake, several salvages are attempted. The 1986 attempt makes use of cutting-edge technology and the most advanced search methods. By 1989, after three years and hundreds of dives, and employing the best science available, the salvagers find no treasure. By now we had the court reports, and in this, uh, you know, they said exactly how many boxes of silver and how many boxes of gold. They always talk about 240,000 uh, pounds. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, refers to the gold alone or the whole consignment. In the officers' quarters, we found some gold coins, about 100, 111, I think, but nothing else. None of the 250,000 coins that were supposed to have been on board, we didn't find that, ever. I guess that if someone was wanting to steal the Birkenhead's treasure, this would have been an ideal smokescreen for doing that. The Birkenhead's treasure has never been found. And in a story born of human aggression and greed, South Africa's sharks, slaves to millions of years of instinct, remain the story's innocent accomplices.